Hi, it's Jack from My Social Practice, and welcome to Digital Marketing Discussions. And I have a special guest with me today, someone I've been looking forward to visiting with for a long time. I've never met Manal yet, but uh, welcome Manal Sampat to our discussion today. Hello to all. Hi, Jack. Fantastic hi. being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great being here, yes. Now, don't ever say hi, Jack, at the airport, okay? <laughs> Don't I will remember, remember that. I'll <laughs> okay. make a mental note. It, people get real nervous, so don't don't ever, <laughs> don't ever say hello, Jack, at the yes. end. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, I'd like to quickly introduce Manal, uh, but before I do, remind our audience that uh, at my social practice, we're always focused on social media, but we recognize that there are lots of components to effective digital marketing, and that's why I've asked a number of guests in recent months to come in and visit with us about. Uh, the various aspects of digital marketing. And Mandal has a, a rich background in marketing, and, and we're going to look forward to hearing some of her ideas today. But before I do, let me give you her quick official introduction. Uh, Manal is a registered dental hygienist, marketing consultant, public speaker, digital media fanatic, and an enthusiastic shoe lover. <laughs> she uh, was born in India, raised in the sunny U.S. Virgin Islands, and now lives on the East Coast. Uh, Manal has been in dental marketing for eight years and been featured in many publications, including the Huffington Post, Business, D uh, Dentistry IQ, Doctor by Cuspid, Dental Entrepreneur. Uh, she does lots of podcasts and speaking and lots of coaching. So, welcome. Glad you're here. Hello. I do want to go. Uh, there's one little thing, though, that I know about you that I want to share with our audience and have you tell us a little bit about that. Uh, sure. Let me find my slide here. Um, oops, you're not supposed to see that yet. Hold on. <laughs> All right. There it is. So tell me about um, th th this little world record that you were involved in. And I'm going to show a little video with no sound while you're telling us about it. Um, sure. I actually started my company, GMM, in 2013, June of 2013. And we wanted to do something to launch the company. But I didn't want to, you know, I was young. I was 28 years old at that point. And I didn't want to just throw a party. I am a hygienist. And we decided, why not use October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's also Dental Hygiene Month. And create something around it where we can actually get money um, and donate it to a cause. So we came up with what is called Swiss River Breast Cancer, as you can see it in the video. Yes. Uh, we joined our forces with a local high school. It's located in Old Bridge, New Jersey. And we created a pink out game for football. So we actually got the entire high school involved. We got the locals involved. We had TV to like the news there. Dentistry IQ did an article on this. And we sold sweatshirts and, you know, uh, little, 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 little things around the, around the switch of breast cancer. And it worked out really well because we were able to not only break the world record, which was, by the way, the amount of people switching mouthwash <laughs> in a certain amount of time. And we had over 1,500 people do it at halftime. Wow. And we gathered over $2,000 and we donated that to Susan G. Komen for breast cancer awareness. So awesome. it kind of, yeah, it I kind of really worked out and that was how we launched the company. Well, that's what a great way to do it and to do, to do good, not only to launch, but to do good. So Thank congratulations. You. And you are an official, are you, is your world record still a world record? No. It no. got broken? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I broke, got broken a couple of times, but I think <laughs> the latest one is held by a Philippines, somebody in Philippines, over 2,000 ah, people did it. Okay. Yeah, but if you Google switch over breast cancer, we still show up. So Yay. yes. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Well, I, I wanted to add that little bit of trivia. Thank yeah. you. So thank you for sharing it. All right. Well, let's dive right in. We've got three ideas. And mm -hmm. as you know, we kind of move this right along. We only spend four minutes and I got a little timer going. So okay. we're only going to spend four minutes on each idea. And you have sent me three ideas that we're going to cover today. And uh, I'm going to get my timer ready. And sure. then we're going to start. So the first idea that you sent me uh, was the concept of, you want to talk for a few minutes about the idea that digital media starts inside our practices. So I'm going to start the timer and uh, set us up on that. All right. So the reason I wanted to start this conversation with that is because many times, you know, all of us live in FOMO, the fear of missing out. And we are so into technology and what's going on that we don't realize that technology is a tool and it's a means to get information out there. So just having a website or just having Facebook or just having Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube is not enough because having those are just outlets, right? 
but you need to make sure they are converting. And the way they convert is that you have to gather content. And the content happens in your practice. It happens with your patients. It happens with your team. So digital media in itself, in order for it to work, you need to start it in-house. You have to record the testimonials. You have to converse with your patients on a daily basis. You know, celebrate their birthdays. It was Valentine's Day yesterday. So if you give out flowers to your patients, good for you. <laughs> but I want to see those photos now on digital media. But if you didn't do that, you don't have those photos. If you don't do team meetings, you don't have pictures of team meetings to share with anybody. If you have a website and you have all stock images and stock information, no one cares. You yeah. are one of many, right? So the whole point the digital marketing starts inside your practice is that you have to build your culture in your practice. You have to be able to create engaging and shareable content inside and then capture it and then put it online because online is just a means of getting it out there. So in my world, you know, I am, I am 31 and I'm millennial. Sorry guys, if you don't like us, <laughs> but um, we live on the digital world, but we are also into engaging and we really want to connect with you. And we decide who we're going to go to depending on their reviews, how they are online, what their team members are saying about them. So again, digital world is a means, is a tool, but who you are, what your practice culture is, what your brand is, all starts inside your practice. Ah, huh, within four minutes, look at that. You I know, did it. <laughs> you, you did it. In fact, you did it in just a little over two minutes. So let's talk just for a, another sure. minute about this. So um, first of all, very, very well said. And that's a Thank concept that, that I really enjoy talking about because on its surface, it seems like a no-brainer. Like, well, yes, of course. But in practicality, mm -hmm. I find that lots of practices, it's, it's not really top of mind to think about it this way. We, we think about digital marketing yeah. as taking place on the web. Mm -hmm. But really, the, the whole thing takes place really inside the practice, and then it, it, it's naturally distributed over the web. Right. And many times, you know, people complain and they come to me and they're like, Manal, we have a website, but there is nothing happening. We don't, we're not getting new right. patients. And I open up the website and I'm like, I don't have any a picture of you. There's on nothing there. I, there. Don't, like, I don't even know who you are. So <laughs> I know. If, you, if, you, if your website doesn't convert, is it necessary? Is it giving you anything? No. So in order for you to convert, you again, have to have engaging and shareable content on there. So and make yeah. it easy for people to find you. You know, don't make it hard. If they're going to take the time to go to your website, wow them. This is your time. Yeah, well said. And then I also think that uh, a lot of times practices think that whenever they do something, it has to be really monumental or really yeah. planned out and like take a whole bunch of time and effort. But I liked you said a moment ago, even a team meeting, mm -hmm. a great opportunity to just turn on, uh, get a smartphone and turn on and do 30 seconds. Hey, we're in our team meeting today. We can't wait for the day to start. We have some of our favorite patients coming in today. And I mean, that kind of content is good content because yep. it lets people know who you are and people like doing business with people they know and like, right? Exactly. Team meetings, a lot of practices do morning huddles, which are great in the morning. If you just do a very quick video, birthdays are great. I mean, that, these are easy things that you can always yeah. capture. And it's not just about capturing and putting this information on. Oh, I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Perfect timing. Uh, one last thing I wanted, I want to say about that before we go to the next idea though, sure. Facebook live yes. is, a, is a good thing to do with your team right now. Cause Facebook is pushing that way up in the feed. Mm -hmm. I, I think Facebook live works better with the team than it really does with patients. And so we have a lot of practices doing a good job uh, streaming live a little team meeting and you don't have to go forever. Just mm -hmm. go for a couple minutes, but that, that might be something to consider. So. Absolutely. All yeah. right. Second idea. Uh, streamline your content to leverage digital media. That was the second idea. I'm going to start the timer. Sure. Um, the reason for this is, so let's say you do have your content. Let's say that you are doing a great job in your practice. You're gathering all this engaging post and you're gathering, you know, you're connecting with your team and your patients. Well, you need to realize that digital media on its own, everything on there is different. Your website is different than your Facebook. Facebook is different than LinkedIn. LinkedIn is different than YouTube. YouTube is different than Snapchat. Whatever platform you use, you need to know what to share on it. So if you have a patient testimonial, right? If you have a video, which is great to have, by the way, if you have a patient testimonial video and you're putting it on Facebook, maybe on LinkedIn, you should be talking about some of the cases. Talk about what actually happened there because LinkedIn is for professionals and Facebook is for your patients, right? So 
you need to know your audience on what you are sharing. Now, when that same video is clicked and you go to the website, you want to have the entire story there. You want to have the picture of the women before and after, or the male before and after, the teeth, what they felt, you know, how, how having this beautiful smile helped them in their lives. You want that to convert. But having just content is not enough. Yeah. You need to figure out how you're going to use that content, on what platform, and when you're going to use it. Because the good part about digital media is that all these places, um, you know, I'll talk about Facebook, you have reports. They actually tell you when, you're, when your fans are online. So use those, utilize those so you can leverage it correctly. Don't post something at 5 p.m. if nobody's online. Yeah. Look at it and see they're online at 8 p.m. I'm going to post it then. So it's really important that you have content, but it's really important to take that content and organize it and streamline it so that every medium that you're using converts well. That's, that's, that's great advice. Um, it reminds me of... I, I used to often talk about this concept in terms of a, um, a car brochure. So if you go into a, let's say you go into a Mercedes dealer and they want to sell you a car, they always have a beautiful printed brochure and the brochure tells the whole story. Mm -hmm. But the brochure, the first few pages usually has just big, beautiful photos of the car driving through the mountains or whatever. But then in the very back, it has a great deal of detail, right down to the size of the tires and the size of the engine. That's all part of the story. But mm -hmm. there are different entry points to the story because different people enter different places. Some people right. want to know the detail about the engine, but right. a lot of people don't care. They just want to know what the leather seat looks like, right? Right. I mean, if you're on Snapchat, you just want a funny photo on there. You yeah, really exactly. You know, I mean, compared to having a whole story on LinkedIn that goes over the case study of what actually happened there. Yeah. So it really does matter how you share that content. It all depends on the audience that's on that platform and the age group too, who we are trying to connect with. Yeah. And I, th I think that's great advice to have a practice sort of look at those entry points and decide if they're publishing mm -hmm. content in the right places for the right people. And I think a lot of practices don't think much about that. So that's mm -hmm. good advice. Yeah, because a lot of times they will have that one video and it's the same video all over, but they can house the video on YouTube and then share it on their website, but they don't want to have the video of YouTube on Facebook because that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Facebook wants its own videos. They want Facebook live videos and actual videos directly on Facebook. So organically, they show up higher. So it's figuring out what platform will work for you instead of you trying to work the platform, you know? So if you have whatever content and say, this is what I'm going to share, just make sure that you're sharing it on the correct platform. It's really important because that's when you get things really get engagement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're not, you're not going to get a whole story of a case study on Instagram that's from right. anyone, right. they're not going to engage with you on that. So it's important to break that all down and create a list of what you're going to do and then break down the list to say, this is what's going to go on here. This is how we are going to take that same content and share it out there. Good. Yeah. I, I think that's a, uh, making a list and then, and then sometimes when you make that list, it makes it more doable and just take a uh -huh. little tiny, cause it's overwhelming sometimes to tell the whole story. So yes. good advice. Okay. Good timing. Yeah. You're good at this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, idea number three, invest in digital media tools to effectively grow your practice. Number three, go. All right. So again, now you have, a co now you have content. Now you're sharing your content and the right medium. Now, if you were to do this all day long, this will be your life. This will be what you do all day long. I mean, we are already on our phones all day long long. I mean, imagine having one piece of content and then figuring out, oh my God, I have to put it on this platform and that platform at this time and that time. Don't do that. You know, keep your sanity, relax, go to the beach, go to some yoga. And the way you're going to do this is by investing in tools. Like my social practice is a great tool because you already have those files ready for you. You already have those things that you're going to create engaging content with your patients. If the hygienist is shy, to talk to the patient, they can give them something and say, hey, you want to take a picture with this? And take that photo. That's a tool. Using online tools like Google Analytics, free tool, add that to your website. It will tell you your visitors, what's converting on your website. You, you, I mean, I use everything. I use Google Analytics. I use a tool called Trello. Trello oh, yeah. helps me organize all my tasks. It helps me work with my team and my clients. I have due dates. I can share information. It's a fantastic tool. I use Canva on a regular basis. 
to create branded information online, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I create these. So the reason for investing in tools is that you need to make sure that you have your sanity and you need to make sure that you are actually doing something good. So just because you have Facebook and you're trying to put information on there does not mean it can be branded. It does not mean that you can't make it look nice because if it looks nice, then, you know, you're going to go ahead and share it. I mean, my social practice, I share your stuff all the time. I share your stuff all the time because it's really great, funny gifs. It's really great, funny content. And it's very well made. So when you have tools to make those things, your life becomes easier. And you have to utilize them. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of the tools that we have available uh, weren't available even, I mean, even just a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you didn't have the kind of tools you have today. You mentioned Canva. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of practices that enjoy. T maybe tell our audience just a tiny bit more about Canva. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, Canva is an online platform, and what it does, it has pre-made mm -hmm. templates, and it gives you templates where you can add your own information. So let's say you know Valentine's Day again. I'm just going to use it because it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you go online, there you're going to see a lot of pre-made information. Now you can easily remove that, edit that, and add your own information. Or you can use their imagery, which is only about a dollar. It's not more than that. Yeah. So what it does, it allows you to always stay current and it allows you to show your brand. And it's a personal, it's kind of like a personal card you're showing online. And here's the best part about Canva. It gives you the automatic size, the dimensions that you need for all these things. So you can go to headers, you can go to social media posts, you can go to flyers and posters, and they're already pre-made. And you can then download them, print mm -hmm. them, or save them and then share it wherever you need to share it or even print them. And I use Canva, you know, pretty much every day, all day. So it's, it's a really easy tool to use. Uh, definitely use it. Again, check out Trello as well. Definitely use it. And I have a bunch of resources listed on my website that I use on a daily Good. basis. So uh, if you guys go there and just do resources, you'll see all of them. I think I use MailChimp a lot too because it's, mm -hmm. again, a newsletter system. It's free up to 2,000 people. It's free up to 2,000 subscribers on there. So Again, a free tool to connect with your patients. Yeah. So there are ways to go around it, but people need to invest in it. You know, it well, makes life a lot easier. Uh, and for our, for our listeners and viewers, uh, I'm going to give uh, Manal's contact information at the end so that you can uh, see these tools. What's neat about Manal is that she isn't in a glass tower. She's not a <laughs> consultant. It just tells practices what's, what to do. You still work inside a practice each week. I you? do. I do. I, I am a dental hygienist. I'm a practicing dental hygienist, and I see patients once a week, pediatric patients, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't want to give it up. So anyway, that's great. Hold on. That's, that's, I think that's really important. Um, some, I think some don't have the, the background in a practice. Like, I've never worked in a dental practice. <laughs> And so sometimes I think, oh, Jack, maybe you, maybe you talk too much about things that, that don't have application. I mean, I work with practices day in and day out and yeah. have been for many, many years. So I have some sense of it, but you're actually in the trenches and doing marketing at the same time. So yeah, don't call yourself short. You're doing great things. <laughs> you're doing just fine. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Our last thing. We do, oh. we do a little trivia quiz I know. at the end of each one of these just for a little bit of fun. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, up to five questions. And as soon as you answer three of them correctly, okay. you okay. win. It's kind of a useless trivia, current events, uh, celebrity. All right. Trivia, <laughs> <deal>. <laughs> so as soon as you win three, as soon as you answer three correctly, you win, except you don't win. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, somebody else wins, and you have asked to play for this Kids practice. Dance. Kids awesome. Dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, is this the practice you work in? Yes, this is where I see patients, yes. That's great. And it uh, looks like pediatric and uh, yeah. all kinds of orthodontics. And, and hey, guess what? Look, their site converts because there's no stock information on there. No, it's <laughs> very <laughs> engaging, very, very personal. You're right. All right, so we'll go, to, uh, we'll go to these questions. Ready? Number one. Okay. Question number one. The athlete, Babe Ruth, is associated with what sport? All right. Uh, I'm going to go with baseball. You are correct. <laughs> Babe Ruth was a famous baseball player, and you, you didn't grow up in the United States, so. No. No, no, no. I was uh, half my uh, my life has been split between India, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and then the Northeast recently. Yes. All right. Very nice. You're you're one for one. Ready? 
Number yes. two, which planet is closest to Earth? If I only paid attention in astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go with Venus. Venus? Yes. That is correct. You are two for two. <laughs> And in fact, I learned uh, recently that Venus, that's, that's actually to scale. Venus is about the same size as the Earth. Did you know that? I did not, but it's, it's, you learn everything. Like yeah. You learn something new every day. There you go. There you go. You, you are two for two. This is too okay. easy. All right. Okay. Question number three. Taco Bell is in the middle of a contest on social media that celebrates the opening of their new flagship restaurant located on the Las Vegas Strip. Mm. What is the grand prize being offered in this social media contest? Hold on, are these tickets to the digital, you know, dental social media marketing conference in Las Vegas? There you go. <laughs> I'm assuming there are tickets to Vegas because if it's in Las Vegas, right? Well, what, what is the, it, it is, it happens in Vegas, but what is the grand prize, do you know? What is the grand prize in Las Vegas that they're yes, going to be giving? That they're going to give away to the winner of this contest. Uh, a stay at one of the many resorts in Las Vegas and some gambling money? Good guess, but you are incorrect. Oh, man. It is to be the first <laughs> couple to be married inside a chapel inside a Taco Bell. So wow. the, the Taco Bell on the Strip has a wedding chapel inside of it. Very smart. And if you, get smart. if you get married there, they even give uh, the guests free tacos. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I should have wore my taco t-shirt today. You know, it's all about tacos. <laughs> I, should have, I should have done that. That may have helped me with this question. Yeah, really. So if you're, if you're looking to our viewers watching this, if you're looking to get married right away, enter this contest because you might get a free wedding at, in Vegas at Del Taco. Or not Del Taco. <laughs> <laughs> not ta Del Taco. Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Taco Bell. Okay, so you're two. Let's see, you're two for three. Okay. Okay, number four. Okay. What is the name of the city where the cartoon family, the Simpsons, live? Springfield. You are correct. <laughs> Springfield. You have one. You're three out of four. You just hit three. So, all right, so awesome. at my social practice, we are going to treat Kids Dent to lunch. Thank you. You know, um, uh, Jack, they're a big practice. They have like 40 people who work there. Oh, no. Maybe we're going to go <laughs> to Taco Bell. Taco Bell. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. We'll get Taco Bell. Yeah, that awesome. sounds great. Okay, last thing. I want to share, uh, share my screen one more time and make sure everybody has your contact information. Um, so uh, this is Manel's, Manel's uh, company name, Growth Management Marketing LLC. There's her phone number. You can contact Manal at Manal at marketinggmm.com. It's marketinggmm.com. And that's also the URL for her website. So if you want to talk about some of the things we talked about today or look at some of the lists that she mentioned, uh, be sure to check that out. And also, Manal is going to be participating with us at our Dental Digital Marketing Conference in April. I want to make sure everybody knows about that because these discussions in part are in preparation for this conference. For two days, we're just gonna do nothing but talk about growing a dental practice through digital marketing. So um, I'll give you the URL in a minute if you wanna go check it out. It's being held at the Red Rock Hotel in Vegas. There's a little video on the website that talks about what we're gonna be doing uh, and what we did in the past couple of years. There's a schedule there with topics. and So take a look at it, see if it's a good fit for your, for your team or for your marketing director or for the doctor in your practice. And if, if you want to check it out, it's at dentalmarketingconference.com. And I actually went there uh, last year in Dallas, and it was absolutely amazing. I well, loved it. So well, I know it's going to be great again. It is a lot of fun. And uh, it's, it, we learn a lot. And what's nice is it's not, it's not a typical conference kind of an yeah. environment. It's just uh, we just talk for two days about, about digital, not just social media. Mm -hmm. um, but about all components of digital marketing. So perfect. All right. Well, anything else before we sign off, Manal, that you want to add? Um, no, just keep being digital. You're <laughs> <We're> there. <laughs> keep being digital. I like that. So until next time, yes. in Manal's words, keep being digital. 
I like That's it. That's right. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.